Hi guys, so welcome to week nine um, in class practice. Um, I'm going to be covering in week nine in class practice. So let's just get into it. Uh, let me share my screen. So we have the data set here from, um, it's the data on electoral democracy and press violence. Uh, so uh, we have different countries and uh, it tracks the data from 2013 to um, 2021 and it uh, gives ranks them uh, ranks their electoral democracy uh, it gives a number to their electoral democracy based on a bunch of different uh, factors and then uh, there's uh, there's also a, 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 a assignment of press violence numbers or press violence, and that's basically based on incidents against journalists. And um, you can read more about the data here. Um, so zero is the least democratic country, and one would be the most democratic, uh, based on variety of characteristics. And then uh, violence against countries, press zero is least instances of violence, and hundred is most instances of violence. Um, so we're going to be covering the concept of regression in this uh, in this uh, practice. Um, so uh, the first question we have is create a scatter plot for electoral democracy versus press violence. And uh, this um, this is usually uh, very uh, you know scatter plots are very useful and important to uh, determine a relationship between two variables. Um, so um, in this case, sorry, I think it should be press violence versus electoral democracy, the other way around. Because we're trying to explore that, how does the electoral democracy score affect press violence? So uh, it will be press violence versus electoral democracy. So if you go to the sheet scatter here, um, I have it created, but let me create this again for you. So basically what you're gonna do is you go to charts here and you see scatter. So if you go to scatter here and you go to the chart design and you can select data. So we add data to so our uh, X values. We can pick them from here and we are our x is electoral democracy right so we pick that and then our series y values are all the values for press violence um oh no So we can, um, yeah, so we have, might have to just give the numbers. So D1 till we go all the way down. One, two, D159, 1539. And similarly, E1 to E1539. Let's see. That's interesting. I don't know why it's doing that. Let's see. Yeah, so sorry, I'm writing the heading others into it. So uh, you give the, basically the, um, if you see the data here, so from here all the way down from here, I was adding the heading and that that is why it was treating it as categorical variables. Um, so yeah, 
So you have this catalog and uh, you can do a couple of things. You can add access titles. So this is your press violence. And then this is your um, electoral uh, democracy score, right? And uh, so the other thing that you can do is, so it looks like if you see here, it looks like, you know, as press as electoral democracy score increases press violence decreases um you can also add a trend line so if you go to the question here um it's asking okay is this relationship positive or negative so this is a negative relationship because as x increases y decreases so this is a negative relationship um and you can add a trend line also here which will kind of give you um, an idea uh, so you see this trend line here, and you can probably also uh, change it, maybe call change its color and its width to make it more prominent. Basically, it's creating that linear relationship line uh, to signify the relationship. And you can also, if you go here to the trend line, so it's saying uh, calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient, which is basically the R value that we want. So if you go to the trend line here, you can say display R squared equation on the chart. And squared value on the chart here. Yeah. It does. So yeah, so that's the R square value, right? I'm just gonna delete this chart. Uh, so this is the our chart that you're using, right? So you have the R square value here, and based on this R square value, you can compute R. So R if R square is zero point six seven one, then R is square root. And since it's a negative relation, so R square obviously would always have positive because it's a square value. But uh, R, which is the square root of, uh, can have positive or negative value. So we know that the relationship is negative. So that's why R would be minus square root of this number, right? So that is your uh, Pearson correlation coefficient. And what does the Pearson coefficient say about the relationship between those two variables? So first thing, you look at the sign, which is negative. Uh, so it's a negative relationship that as electoral democracy increases, press violence goes down. And it's a high value, right? It's uh, greater than 0 0.7, which means there's a there's a strong negative correlation because higher this R value is than Pearson coefficient value, the stronger the relationship is. Uh, like if, if the value is zero, that means that the line would be horizontal. This would be horizontal that there's no relationship. And if it's uh, if the value is one, that means it's a perfectly linear relationship. Right. Um, so in this case, it's uh, the R value is 0. Point, uh, minus 0. 0.8, which signifies a stronger relationship because it's closer to one. OK, um, so. Yeah, so the next uh, question is um regress press violence on electoral democracy and what is the equation that represents this uh regression um so if you um come here to the data so uh, you you need to do a couple of things for this um if you go here and to the add-ins go to the add-ins and So if you go to the add-ins here, uh, just so yeah. So if you go to the add-ins here, you can search for this add-in called Stat Plus. So you'll see this Stat Plus, and then just add this add-in. Uh, once you add it, you will get this. Uh, Uh, a tab here of stat plus 
at the top of your Excel. Uh, so once you have it, uh, you can go to this tab and say, I want to do regression. So you'll press, press regression, right? So you'll see this and uh, only like multiple linear regression. We are doing linear regression. There are a lot of other things that you can do. They are um, paid versions, but uh, linear regression is free. So you can select this linear regression. And the way you do linear regression is that you give um, it the columns that you want to regress. So your dependent variable is the Y variable. Um, and that in this case, so if you are regressing press violence on electoral democracy, your dependent variable is press violence. And um, so you're going to say, OK, use columns as data source and you're going to give the uh, press, sorry, press violence as the uh, X, uh, the Y variable or the dependent variable. And the independent variable is your electoral democracy. You're going to say use columns and give the electoral democracy. So. Once you have that, uh, and you also select headers, name it first row because your columns have headers, right? And then you can run it. So once you run it, it's going to generate this whole sheet for you. And these are your regression results. So it's going to give you the R value, the R squared, a lot of other values, which you'll uh, learn later on in the course or even in more advanced courses. So this is the equation that you have for linear regression. That press violence is equal to this minus uh, this um, into electoral democracy. So if you want to calculate a value for press violence, you can give a value of electoral democracy in this equation, and you'll get the value for press violence. And how do we get that? We get, we get that from the coefficients of our intercept. So if you go here, um, our, um, this. so, um, oh, sorry. So if you go here, um, your basically the equation is Y is equal to M plus, um, sorry, um, uh, C plus M into x, right? Uh, that's your linear relationship, right? So y is your dependent variable. So in this case, it would be press freedom, uh, press violence, sorry. Press violence is equal to, so what's your coefficient, your intercept, and this is your gradient, which is the coefficient, right? Uh, or it can also be written as B naught plus B1. When you're doing regression, these are the more commonly used. So B naught is your um, uh, uh, intercept and B1 is your uh, gradient or the coefficient, right? Um, so if you go here to the results, you these are coefficients. So the coefficient for uh, your uh, intercept is 61.9 and the coefficient for your X variable is minus 52, right? So if you come here, your coefficient for B naught is uh, 61.9 and your coefficient for X is uh, minus 50, uh, what was it? Minus 52.4, right? So minus 52.4. Let's actually convert this into red color, right? So this is your equation. And this is what you get from running the regression, right? Um, and then, so I, once you have that, once you have these results, uh, there are a bunch of things that you can use it for. Um, so if you look at the question here, so regress press violence on electoral democracy, what is, uh, so identify the following values and provide an interpretation. So constant. So what does the constant mean? The constant, if you look at this regression here and you look at this uh, coefficient, the intercept occurs when x is equal to zero. And in this case, what does x is equal to zero mean? x is equal to zero means that our electoral democracy uh, here, we said 
that x is equal to zero when electoral democracy is zero, which means that there is no democracy in a country. It is uh, as it has zero value for democracy. It has no electoral democracy. Uh, it could be a dictatorship or autocracy or whatever. Then the press violence value would be uh, 61.9 because this x will become zero, right? And so this term would disappear. And then, so the remaining term would be this. So this is what the intercept basically means. Um, and so slope, what does the slope mean? The slope means that if you change this value, x value of x by one unit, then you are going to change the y value by this much. So what does this mean? Uh, because our electoral democracy values range only from 0 to 1 um, here, right? 0 to 1. So if we go from, we change the one unit, which is going from 0 to 1, right? In this case, uh, because our value are only ranging from 0 to 1 and it calculates a one unit. So if you go from 0 to 1, your press violence will decrease by minus 52. And so in this case, it could mean that, uh, so in this case, it could mean that if a country is perfectly democratic, that it has democracy, uh, perfect democracy and value of one, then its press violence would uh, decrease by minus my 52 points compared to a country which has no democracy, right? Uh, so this is, in this case, it applies, but a lot of times you won't have uh, X variable without, which only ranges from zero to one, it can range from zero to thousand. So in that case, it will calculate what is the unit. So if the unit is one, if you're moving by one unit, so then you interpret it accordingly. Okay. Um, right. Um, so for, yeah, so basically slope means for each unit increase in electoral democratic conditions, which in this case is one unit, and that's the entire spectrum, uh, the press value is expected to decrease by 52.4 per. So R square is the model fit. Um, and so electoral democracy accounts for approximately 67% of the observed differences in press violence scores. So basically R square determines that how much change uh, that you observe in press violence is affected by electoral democracy. How much of that change can be explained? So 67% of the change can be explained. And this is, this is, this is a basically a determinant in relationship that R square value uh, is just, uh, that is the definition of R squared value, which is uh, here, right? So it says that 67% of the observed differences in press violence can be explained by the changes in uh, electoral democracy. And then finally, 95% confidence interval. So if you come here, uh, you'll see that you have a confidence interval for both intercept and electoral democracy coefficient, x coefficient. So the, the, the confidence interval for this is minus 54.2 to 50.5. Right, so your value is 52. So the 95% confidence interval is 54 minus 54 to minus 50. And basically this means there, there can be a couple of, you can be 95% confident that the value of uh, electoral democracy coefficient that uh, it lies between this uh, interval. But a more appropriate definition would be that if you took 95 percent 100 samples and uh, of of data and you did regression on 100 of those samples 95 of those samples will have a value for this coefficient falling between this range that is a more appropriate um uh um, um basically um definition for this uh, coefficient um, uh, for the conference interval. Uh, but in other ways, you can also say that there we, uh, we can say with 95% confidence that the magnitude of statistics, that the magnitude of the 
uh this relationship or this coefficient lies between these two uh between this range which in more statistical terms would mean that if you took 100 samples and regressed uh then 95 percent of the time or 95 samples would have your uh a coefficient falling between this so that was it for the week nine um practice uh, it was quick, but uh, there's a lot of important concepts here. So I would, uh, you know, you should really read up on regression because this is something that you're going to use all the time if you later on go towards a more quantitative role um, or take quantitative courses. So it's very important to be aware of this, these concepts and, you know, how to apply them in Excel. Um, so, yeah, uh, thank you for listening and I'll uh, see you guys in the next uh practice session. Thank you.